We're back for your ears only. I'm Melissa Axelberth. I'm David Alpern with this quote from the news, infamous back from the dead stories that we both love and hate. That was SoapCentral.com founder Dan Kroll comparing an effort to revive two recently canceled TV soap operas, All My Children and One Life to Live, on the Internet. Uh, to so many old plot lines of the shows themselves. The Internet project has been suspended for lack of financial support and strong union support. Now this. Edith Piaf, considered by many to be the greatest of all French sainteuses as she sang in her heyday, and as she's channeled today by French-born New York-based singer, actress, director Floan Anka to mark the 50th anniversary of Piaf's death. A child of the Paris streets, Piaf died at age 47 in October of 1963, years before Floanne was born on a farm in rural France. And Floanne brings her own contemporary viewpoint to the Little Sparrow's repertoire in a show called Edith Piaf Alive and Living in New York at Manhattan's Metropolitan Room and Triad Theater starting this week and monthly through March. With a preview for your ears only, Floanne Anka joins us now. Bonjour and welcome to our show. Thank you very much. Do you, Welcome. Bonjour, David. Do you recall when and how you first heard Piaf and your reaction? Well, I was a child and I, I heard her sound. Uh, you know, I grew up in the countryside. I didn't see her much on TV images, but uh, it was definitely early on, and it was a sound that was different from the other things that were on the radio. So for me, it was, it was a sound that I remember. Did she influence your desire to sing, act, and dance as a career? Not necessarily. I think I was very reluctant to go into her songs because they were so iconic for me uh, at the beginning. Even when I saw the, the, the movie with Marion Cotillard, I was a little bit uh, scared to go into it because for me it was such a vivid uh, memory of my childhood. Well, it's interesting. You bring Piaf to life through her songs, but to get there, uh, you also delve into the tragedy that was so much of her life. So is this as much an acting job as a singing gig? <laughs> It's interesting because for me in general, singing is very infused in your life. So when you start to work on material and it's love songs, everything around you, you know, is a little bit, you know, uh, off center like in your song. And so I've had this experience before. So I think I made an effort in the choice of song for uh, the ATCF program to try and take some, some of the material that was a little bit more upbeat, so that even though there is some tragedy in the song, the show still has some drive and it's fun to perform. Um, we're not dwelling in the, in the issues. We are looking back with, with a wink. How large a presence does Piaf remain in French culture and consciousness still, a national voice like America's Frank Sinatra, or more a figure of nostalgia like our Judy Garland? I would go for Sinatra. I think that she has more, it, somehow, because, because of her very peculiar life story, people, people love her for who she is. And I don't know that it's so much of a romantic memory that people have. I mean, she has a strong icon and people like her because she was bold and, and she made her choices with integrity. The title of the new show, Edith Piaf Alive and Living in New York, is a sly reference to the off-Broadway classic Jacques Brel is alive and well and living in Paris, even after he wasn't any of those three. And you also sing Brel, who was emotional too, but in a different way. What do you see as the biggest differences between those two, their styles, the songs they wrote or performed? Yeah, it's hard for me to, to say now because I'm so, you know, infused in the music. I'm in the middle of it, so... I try to not have a judgmental perspective from an outsider's point of view. I really try and find the answers in the words and in the music. So for me, I approach them in the same manner uh, in terms of my performance of it. I actually have a song from Brel in the, in the show, and uh, I sing it as, as Floanne, because in the show we have both Floanne and Edith, you know, going back and forth. So, yeah, I, I, I think I... I mean, basically what they have in common is the French chanson is the words, and, uh, which are very rich and romantic and, and powerful. I mean, they both had a lot of guts. Um, I see more similarities than I see differences. 
What other singers, French, American, whatever, do you listen to for instruction or entertainment? Well, it's interesting because I, I'm, I guess I'm a busy uh, <laughs> person. I like to keep myself uh, creative. So I don't um, see or infuse a lot of, of culture. However, when I'm working on something, I, I uh, research like... <laughs> like uh, very, very much so. I, I, I look for a lot of information, uh, a little bit like a, like a nerd. So for the French chanson, I did a lot of research. But I would say that actually what I, what I look more for instruction in, in terms of inspiration is the people that are around me that are singing live. Uh, it, it, you know, I mean, when I work on a song, I, I look at, you know, different people who work on this material, different people from that era, and, you know, get, get an understanding of what we're doing. But then I think the, what I enjoy the most is to, yeah, in, ter- in terms of, you know, inspiration for performing is, is to be there live in the space and see what other people do with their timing, with their eyes. And, and, and then that's how I try and learn. Flo Ann is a French-born, New York-based singer, actress, director, and songwriter. She's performing Edith Piaf, alive and living in New York, once or twice a month through March at the Metropolitan Room and the Triad Theater. Performance dates, info, audio, and video clips are available at floann.com. And this has been For Your Ears Only. 